Greetings and welcome back to Smartwatch Ticks. We're a YouTube channel on the web at smartwatchticks.com. So are you a Z-Blaze fan? Uh, you like the Vive line? How about Vive 3? How many of you got? How many are out there? Well, let's see. We started with the original Vibe 3 on February 1st, 2018. Got the review right here. Then the HR came out September 27th of the same year, followed by the Pro April 16th, 2019. Then the Vibe 3 ECG on May 9th, 2019. And finally, the Vibe 3S August 22nd, 2019. How do I know all this? I went to smartwatchticks.com and on the page there's a little magnifying glass and I typed in Vibe 3. Try it. You can get all those videos up and check them out. And here it is. This is the Vibe 3 GPS. Oh, we want to look at it. But first we want to tell you where you can get it because I hear you going, I want it, I want it now. AliExpress, the official Z-Blaze store has it available. It's the new 2020 Z-Blaze Vibe 3 GPS smartwatch. Check the show notes if I got a coupon for you to apply. Uh, you can do that and check it out at a cheaper price. You also can pick it up through Banggood, working together with these guys too on this 1.3 inch full Android watch. Full Android? No, full round touchscreen smartwatch. They're looking at what, uh, just under $40. I think it's flash sale, but check again if I got a coupon in the show notes. It will be there, and you can buy from your preferred choice. As far as specifications go, here it is right off the bat. It's a 50 millimeter. It's a good sized uh, um, watch, 15.9, almost 16 millimeters thickness since it has a GPS module in it. By the way, it's GPS and GLONASS. It's using a new case material, drilling carbon coating. Band material is a 24 millimeter sport strap made of TPU. It's got the wrist sizes, display is 1.3 inch IPS, full round color. Not all of the vibes have been that way, you know. 240 by 240, there's your GPS, heart rate sensor, Bluetooth, battery has a 280 milliamp hour. It's about a three hour charging, but get this, 15 days of basic uh, watch use, 10 days in daily use mode, and 235 minutes in continuous GPS. How many hours is that, guys? Battery life may vary, of course. Uh, it's an IP67 waterproof watch. Dedicated USB charging uses the Fundu app. These are the supported languages right now. And the standout features there, which we will cover as we take a look at it. Okay, got the watch out of the box. What else is in here? Looks like there's a manual in the bottom and a little compartment here that's obviously got the charging apparatus in it and it's using a standard wire no dock on this one two pin connector it's not quite strong enough to hold it it is a bit of a heavy watch that's always my test about battery string it of course will charge it just make sure you've got it good and connected the bands lie flat they're definitely removable so you can charge it at night just by putting it down we could take that cover off and get you excited about seeing the screen as we take a look at the thick user's manual multiple languages okay by vibe 3 gps uh, basic instructions bracelet functions are listed here Again, we do a, uh, a quick going over of the manuals each time, just in case you lose yours. Uh, we don't usually find these anywhere on the web, so you always know you can come here, watch the beginning of a review, and catch it. There's a QR code you can download to get into the Fundu app. We have, of course, the link in the show notes below the video, along with the buying links and other information that's useful for you, so be sure to check there basic parameters, and that ends the English part. All right, as usual, time to charge it up and turn it on then. We're fully charged, press the button, turn it on really quickly. It comes up with its first watch face, and it gives you a layout of what's on here. When we're from the watch face, we swipe down, we get into a looping thing that shows you your step count, 
your current heart rate with highest and lowest, it looks like, your last night's sleep time, hours, minutes, light and deep sleep, and daily uh, sports records, if you have any. Those loop continuously at that top level. If I go here to the right, get to my notifications and no further, go to my left, and I get to some icons, which include a do not disturb mode that you can turn on, maybe. Uh, brightness, there we go, brightness. There's full bright, which is really nice. Good and bright, looks like it should be pretty easy to see outdoors. Dim is moderately dim. It could be dimmer for my tastes for indoors uh, at night, but that's its level right now. One, two, three different brightness levels. Your, um, find your phone when you're tethered to it. And I'm not getting that uh, silent mode to work. Then I can go into settings, and you got all kinds of setup here, which we'll get to. Uh, once I get out of this, because I didn't want to go there, I got uh, that on the left, that on the right, that whole thing going up there, and then going up, we get to all of the apps. And these also go around and circle back again. I think we have setting in there. If not, we'll go back the other way. So you've got your overall step count, which we saw on the panel up above. Um, here are your different sport modes that you can set. Walking and running. These are going to use GPS, no doubt. Indoor running. I keep usually scrolling up, but you can see this watch wants you to go to the side. Okay. Then we've got outdoor cycling, which should be GPS. Climbing, I don't know. This I've never heard of. Pedestrianism. That's like supercalifragilisticexpialidocious, huh? Pedestrianism. Can you say that three times? It looks like hiking to me. But then there's climbing. So climbing, hiking, pedestrianism. I don't know. Free training. And then motion record. This is probably the list of all your records, which remember when we went down was one of the tabs up above as well. Okay, that's all in here. Then we get into here, and there's the sports records again, which I guess may be the same as the ones we were looking at there. Here's our do not disturb. No, it's not. There's our last night's sleep time. Sorry. Um, yeah, yeah, okay. That covers all of these. Step count, uh, your your sports stuff, your records, and last night's sleep time. Now we get into heart rate, uh, blood pressure, blood oxygen, and such. For that, let's put it on because you haven't seen it on yet. By the way, guys, you see all these wonderful marks all over my arm? I know you guys are wondering, oh my God, does he have a, a fatal disease or something? The ugliest arm in the world. I know. And you know what? <laughs> Mrs. Tix makes me go out and weed whack the yard, and it's got a lot of boulders and, and rocks and things, and doggone if they don't slam up and bruise me. So I am so sorry, but they'll go away, and I'll have new ones. That's how you can tell the age of my videos is by the pattern of the stars on the arm. Now you know. it's I'm just fine. It's doggone having to do weed whacking that makes that ugly. But it's really ugly today, so I thought I'd tell you. Okay, heart rate. We are starting out, and it's flashing the little heart thing. It looks like we've got low and high, and we're going to get a regular reading there. And then there's a pointer, but it's really small. It's in the blue zone now. I get 66 across the board. If I'm exercising, theoretically, it should go up. And we're hoping this is working in the background all day long so that you can check it periodically and see what your highs and lows were. For right now, it's doing its thing. And it's doing it well. And no way out of that? Okay, swipe down. Then we come over here and um, this says MMG, which is usually millimeters of mercury, which usually applies to blood pressure. So we'll see what we get here. It could be altitude, um, but I doubt it. And I'm not sure how long it will take, but we'll give it a moment. Yeah, 71 over 118 is kind of backwards. Diastolic over systolic. It's usually reported the other way. That's low for me, typically, but it is a reading nonetheless. And as we all know, 
A reading is better than none, right? Blood oxygen. We always take a peek to see if the diode is red. Nope, it's green. It's a much better, faster, more accurate reading for blood oxygen when it uses a red diode. But that's okay. It's simulating it and getting it however it's doing it. As long as you're somewhere above 95, you're probably okay. But just remember, don't rely on it. Um for anything more than just a, a casual reading because derived from the green diode isn't actually the, the best way to get it. Then we got like, it looks like alarm clocks that we could set here and that's that page. Music player when you're tethered, remote camera when you're tethered, find your phone when you're tethered and it all tethers to that Fundu app which we've seen many, many times. So now we'll go into settings where you have sedentary uh, reminders that you can turn on or off from the watch, which is nice to be able to do that. And about, which gives you the information, it's the Vibe 3 GPS, that's the software version and such. Uh, your screen brightness is controlled from here as well as from that icon. And that was the lowest setting, huh? That's plenty bright for us indoors right now. That's the first page restart power off or reset the whole watch and that's what you got those two pages for setting so i think we've covered everything page one page two page three. Oh no we haven't we have a stopwatch which is on here we always like to know can we leave the stopwatch and come back and will it still be running well no it put it in pause but it didn't reset it at least Let's check that again. We're at about 12, 13, 14. We're about 14 seconds, and now I'm out of it, and I come back into it. Wow, it's at 18. Is it still running in the background? I don't know. Uh, it shouldn't have been that high if I stopped it at 14. Okay, it stopped at 18. Now you got me wondering. I know. This is how we eat up time. Are you getting some flicker on your screen? I'm seeing it uh, here. It's not in the watch. If you are seeing flicker, it has to do with the refresh time of the watch and the camera interfering with each other. And there I talked long enough to show you that it was running in the background all this time. But when I went into it, it put it in pause. Never seen one behave that way. But good to know, if you want to um, time something, you can, you can start it out and you can leave it. Looks like we've got um, split times that you can have, but they're real small. You can pause it, you can reset it, you can get out of it. And this one is your count um, down timer. I'll set it for two seconds, start it and finish. But I'm not feeling a vibration or hearing a sound, but it flashed on the screen that it's finished. Okay, I've always been using this button. What does the bottom one do? Aha, it takes you into uh, the, the fitness settings, which is really where we want to go now. And I'll do more of this review after I've gone out and played with it with the GPS. Well, I got some data on it. And sadly, I can't report that this is working really well. I've tried hard to get it to uh, conform, if you will, to the uh, way GPS is expected to work. And um, it, I'm not getting there. I, I've done uh, walking, running, uh, let's see, done uh, some cycling, which was actually riding around in the car, and even a pedestrianism session. And all of it has given me some strange results. Let me first take you to um, the records. Here's, here's on the watch some of the records that we get. That one's real teeny. Let's go to this one here. I get a nice simulated graph, and it's just a line against a black background that shows me uh, the information. This was outdoor cycling, the time, the consumption, which is calories burned, um, the heart rate average, the distance traveled, and your speed in terms of pace now. And then, of course, you can throw the record away. And the chart like that. And if I come back here, I could show you another one. There's another cycling. Well, all right, let's look at this one. This was uh, the pedest pedest <laughs> for the life of me. I can't say that pedestrianism. Pedestrianism. I've never seen a watch do that. Stopped it right at 30 minutes. There's my consumption, number of steps, heart rate, 
and I believe that's speed and pace, and stride, number of steps per minute, and the distance traveled. That's all collected there, but no GPS record on that one. Um, and one more we'll look at. Let's see, do I have any more? Yeah, I do. Here's a, a straight walking one that was around my house. So it scales automatically to show you a graph that'll fit in the screen. And you can't really do anything with that. It's just there. But uh, this is more or less GPS accuracy of several yards just around my, my living area here. Again, I got time and calories, number of steps, and so forth and so forth. And so each of these records gives you some basic data. But the, the true story is when we tether this thing to the Fundu app, which I have here to show you, this is just the basic... Um, walking record and if i go over here now when we go into history it has to synchronize with the watch to bring that up and here we go so i've got that first walking um data refresh success here's the detail on the app shows you the kind of things that it's collecting when it's doing that and I've got the pace, which is not really shown here. And then I've got my charts, which is a heart rate chart, stride, and that's not really shown on that one. So let's use a different one. Come back here. Oops, let's get back in here. Let's try this cycling one. Um, 51 minutes. Here we go. Look at that. I've got a chart. I've got some statistics on here. That's all in the trajectory. And when I zoom in, you can see I've got, uh, wow, i got quite, quite the display here. And each of these are uh, markers for miles or kilometers, which I can turn on and off right here. Plus, I can turn on and off the background map if I want to. And the map is currently on in just the generic sense. And then if I press that, I go into my um, satellite map, the Google satellite map. And this is where it gets interesting because you see my entire track is floating in water. And that was a really nice excursion on the mountains underwater somewhere off the coast of Australia. If I zoom out far enough, to get the whole map to show up, it's nowhere close to where I am. Where are we talking? China's over here, Australia. Is that in Indonesia? Anyway, it's great at accumulating some sort of a chart. However, the GPS coordinates are completely on the other side of the planet. And, um, yeah, I, I can't make sense out of it. This is not an anomaly. This is how it's working. So my trajectory is useful to get an idea of the chart. It's useful to take a little look like this, but you can't use the map on it at all because uh, it's nowhere near accurate to where I'm at. The other thing I found out, when I'm actually using it, the speed is way off. It jumps all over the place from 12 miles an hour to 57 miles an hour. Uh, the average is nowhere close to the actual movement. Uh, so you can't use it real time for giving your speed, or I presume your pace, as that's related to speed, or your energy, which is your calories burned, related to speed and heart rate and distance travel. Yeah, but I did get a VO2 max in milliliters per kilogram per minute, training level C, some other stuff on here. There's the pace, and I'm getting actual dots on here for pace, cycling. Yeah, cycling pace. I guess that's the longest and that's the shortest, something like that. And then an overall chart that's showing me a change in elevation, which is pretty cool. A heart rate, which just kept going up and up and up 
which is of course not realistic over the 51 miles of uh, or minutes 51 minutes that my heart rate would just be linear like that i don't know anyway either there's an issue with the uh the data on the fundu app fundu as you know is not one of my favorite ones because it does support ECG for the watches that do ECG. However, it fakes the ECG charts on here. So I've had a little bit of a rub with this particular app to begin with. The data that's coming in on this is, uh, is strange. And it's either strange because it's generated by the watch that way, um, and there's issues with the GPS in the watch or the app or both. You're seeing what I'm getting. I'm just reporting it for you. Also, um, you have from this main tab, that overall sports page history we got to from there. You have your daily step count information and last night's sleep time, which I didn't do because I haven't slept with it, but it would be here. You have an overall heart rate, which also seems to be a bit um, abnormal. And even if it were normal, I don't know if you can see the line over here. It's showing you the gauge of these things. Um, I'm getting average, minimum, and maximum. I'm not getting a scale across here. And I'm getting a squiggly line, like you could do with a crayon on a wall or something. I don't really have a scale against... I don't know how what I would use this at all. I can't spread it. I can just kind of look at it day by day. And I think this is a, a good part of the time I wasn't even wearing the watch. So there's my heart rate data as simulated by the watch. No blood pressure, not on this watch. No blood oxygen is not monitored on this watch. And no ECG, which would be the next tab if the watch supported it. Uh, it doesn't even show that tab on here. So the Fundu app tethers with this one, but I get really strange results and meaningless results. Um, the watch is a nice build quality. It looks good and sturdy. It's got a nice bright screen. If I brighten it up to maximum, it's like seriously good bright. So it would be viewable outdoors if you want to use it for telling time and maybe checking your step count. Um, its battery level is already down to two thirds. I've worn it a day and a half, two, day, two days, I guess now, and done some GPS work with it, but it's not going to be a 30 day, uh, day watch. So it's not really ranking high for me, especially compared with the Amaze Fit line that we've been looking at, the Stratos 3, the BIP S, the uh, T-Rex. Uh, someday we'll compare all these different GPS watches together. But for right now, I'll say that what I'm getting data-wise doesn't match up with reality as I know it. However, if you like this one, the, the Z-Blaze um, Vibe 3 GPS, you can pick it up from the AliExpress special uh, official store. Not terribly expensive. It's under 50 bucks for it. And of course, if you'd prefer, you can go over to Banggood and pick it up from these guys too. All right. Well, thanks for sticking with me with this. And uh, we'll see you again soon, huh? All right.